And this word grace is used, this is interesting, 170 times in the King James Version of the Bible. <laughs> and favor is used another 70 times. 240 times. You think the Lord is trying to get something across to us. But church, so many of us live outside of that favor mentality. In studying for this, and this will, I'll probably be on this for a few weeks, in studying to prepare for this message, I, I read excerpts from a book entitled, Are You Walking in the Fog? F-O-G stands for favor of God. I thought that was kind of cool. And in a summary that I read, it gave a list of the blessings that come to us through God's favor. I thought that was pretty cool, too. In fact, I found another list from Eagle Mountain Church, which is Kenneth Copeland's church. Many of the things were the same. And listen to these things that are listed as the blessings of favor that we can expect. Yes. Church, that's the key. Yes. If you don't expect it, then you're not believing it. And guess what? It ain't coming. We have to believe it to receive it. Amen. When it comes to anything, yes. listen to these things that blessings, or these list of blessings that God's favor will bring to you. Number one, favor promotes you. Number two, favor pushes open doors that would otherwise be closed to you. Three, favor protects you. Number four, favor gives us the victory over adversity and over our adversaries. Mm. Number five, favor brings you prosperity and increase. Number six, favor positions you to be blessed. You know how the, the word talks in Malachi about the tithe and it says that it'll open up the windows of heaven and the Lord can pour you out a blessing? What good is it if you're standing under somebody else's window? Or if you're on the wrong side of the house? You need to be positioned under that window. Amen? Amen. Seven. Favor gives you influence. It puts you in a position of influence where you can make a difference. <coughs> Number eight, favor proceeds from generation to generation. Number nine, favor brings more favor. Mm. I like that one too. And number ten, favor promotes church growth and influence. Now you'd never know that today. <laughs> but maybe they'll hear this and want to come next week. <laughs> When they hear that we're giving away a brand new Buick at the end of the service, they'll wish they were here. Mm. Just, just kidding. Now, church, we need to keep in mind that there's an enemy out there. This is all the good news that I just gave you. But we need to realize there's an enemy who the scriptures say roams about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Now, this enemy very aptly uses fear. He uses fear for what purpose? To keep you from God's favor. If he can keep you from all those blessings using fear, then he has fulfilled his own evil purpose. Church, you see, fear, you know what it does? It undermines your faith. Fear is the opposite of faith. You see, because as I mentioned before, if you can be kept from believing something, you'll be kept from receiving it. This is why the Lord encourages us over and over and over again throughout the scriptures, Old Testament and New, to not fear. 
but to have courage, to stand strong, to be bold. I, I want you to uh, hear the Lord's instructions to the Israelites as they faced an absolute unknown called Canaan. Church, this is where fear comes in a lot, when we're faced with the unknown. When we're faced with a situation that we haven't had to deal with before, a set of circumstances that are new to us, that uncertainty can often produce fear, and fear is going to rob from you. Well, the Lord gave instructions to the Israelites as they were facing Canaan. That was their promised land, remember? They had no idea what lay on the other side, except for what the spies told them back in Numbers. Remember that? Oh, we are not surely able. There's giants in the land. Yeah, six of them. But meanwhile, they said that everybody there was a giant. You see, fear can so foul up our perception, distort our perception. Friends, if, if the enemy could, he would plant that evil seed of fear and doubt in us every single moment just to keep us from our inheritance. I want you to hear the word that he delivered to Joshua because it was Joshua that was going to lead the people into the promised land. Listen to what he said to him. This is in Joshua 1, 6 through 9. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Be strong and courageous. Those are the words that the Lord spoke to him. Be strong and courageous, for you're the one that will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors that I would give them. Verse 7, be strong and very courageous. See, just courageous wasn't enough. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them. Turning either to the right or to the left. Then you'll be successful, listen, in everything you do. Don't you like that? Praise God, I love it. Study this book of instruction. The Word. Study it continually. Meditate on it day and night. So you'll be sure to obey everything written in it. Listen, only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. Verse 9. Listen to this. This is my command. The Lord wasn't asking it of them. He commanded it of them. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Hallelujah. Do you hear that? Yes. Hallelujah. No matter what you're having to deal with, that fear would come in. The Lord says, don't you dare fear. I'm there. Amen. I'm with you yeah. wherever you go, whatever you go through, yeah. I'm there. Yeah. You, so Lord. don't fear. Have courage. That's right. Amen. Have courage. Oh, church, I know some of us Hallelujah. have experienced such heartache. Some of us have gone through some really tragic experiences. The Lord says, fear not. I'm going through it with you. I mean, you do remember the spies, right? Moses sent them into the promised land, into Canaan. Go take a look at the land that God promised to give us. <laughs> Didn't matter what God said. What mattered to those that had fear was what they saw. They didn't hold on to the promise of God. They were overwhelmed by fear. Friends, I had no understanding of God's favor and grace. That was the problem. How many times do we, when faced with certain situations, feel as though there's just no way? There's no way. How could I ever overcome this? The simple answer, by the grace of God. That's how. With the favor of God. That's how. Friends, we all face decisions in life. 
of whether we should walk in faith or walk in fear. Demonic seeds of doubt get sown in all of us at one time or another. And they'll always paint the worst possible picture of an outcome. But I want you to think about this. I want you to think about the Israelites while they were still in Egypt. Remember all the plagues that were brought on that land? It was horrific. Those plagues were ravishing the, the land, the people, the nation of Egypt. But God had a special plan. God had a special place for his people in the midst of all those plagues. That place called Goshen. That special little cul-de-sac for his people. I don't know if it was a cul-de-sac, but I envisioned it as one. <laughs> Friends, Goshen was a place of grace. Church, when we get a revelation of God's favor, and when we get a revelation of his grace, it will dispel and disarm every fear. It'll transport you into your Goshen. Church, we need to come out of the fear realm. Yes. I mean, we've got to abandon that place altogether. And we may need to lay claim to, to this favor realm. Amen. Huh? Yes. This is a place that God created just for you. We need to lay claim to that place. We need to put down stakes in the state of grace. Mm -hmm. Church, we need to drive stakes into that place in the state of grace. We've got to do this. We do this by faith. We get a revelation and then we say, it's mine. This God did this for me. Church, we can't just be playing the part. huh? And we can't just be talking the part. But instead we've got to be living it out and we got to walk in favor. Is that still up there? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, a great example I want to share with you today is about a young lady named Esther. And listen, this is an important example because this was a young lady that was through a lot. She lost her dad. And this is something that so many young women today suffer. Dads either walk out, pass away, but for whatever, there's no dad in the house. Esther was raised by her uncle Mordecai. And she was a young Jewish woman in a pagan world. Not a real good place to be. And she was gorgeous to top it all off. Not always an easy thing to have either. Well, King Xerxes, that was kind of his nickname because his real name was too long for most people to pronounce. Now, understand, this was in Persia or Babylon. And King Xerxes sent out a word that he was seeking a new queen. He was very unhappy with the old queen, Vashti, so he vanquished her. Away with you! Because she wouldn't come out and show her beauty to his friends. Now, remember that the Jews were really discriminated against here in Babylon. And there was one particular advisor to the king named Haman. And he was vile. This little man. But he got so powerful within this government of Babylon that he wanted everyone to bow to him like he was a god. Well, Esther's uncle, Mordecai, 
He wasn't hearing that bow stuff. He said, I'm not bowing to him. He refused to bow to Haman. Haman was so enraged at Mordecai's refusal to bow to him that he urged the king and deceived the king into ordering the extermination of all the Jews in the kingdom. So, now the king's scouts are out there looking for a new queen. And they saw Esther. And Esther was beautiful. The word says that. They believed these scouts of the king that she was exactly what the king had in mind. <clears throat> I believe that Esther tasted of God's favor and grace from the moment she entered the palace. Listen to this. I'm reading from the second chapter of Esther, verses 8 and 9, and these I'm reading from the Amplified. It says, So when the king's command and his decree were pro proclaimed, and many maidens were gathered in Sushan, the capital, under the custody of Haggai, Haggai that was the eunuch. Esther also was taken to the king's house into the custody of Haggai, keeper of the women. And the maiden pleased Haggai. And listen, and obtained his favor. Huh? Here's a little Jewish girl with no father, been through the mill, gets grabbed out of her house by these scouts for the king, said, you're beautiful, the king is going to like you, you're coming with us. Church, this is God. It says that he speedily gave her the things for purification. He's talking about, this is in other versions, bathing things. Things to, for her bath to make her clean and smell nice and all that stuff. And he gave her a portion of food. Now listen to this. And seven chosen maids to be given her from the king's palace. And he removed her and her maids to the best apartment in the harem. Now listen to this. In Esther 2, 15 through 17, it says, Now when the turn for Esther, the daughter of Abihel, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her as his daughter, when she had to go into the king, she required nothing but what Hegai, or Hegai, the king's attendant, the keeper of the women, suggested. Listen. And Esther won favor in the sight of all who saw her. Everybody that saw Esther loved Esther. Everybody that saw her favored her. Church, this isn't a natural occurrence. There wasn't some halo around her. There was the favor of God around her. There was grace all over her. Verse 16. So Esther was taken to King, here's his real name, Ahasuerus. Verse 17. And the king loved Esther more than all the women. Listen. Oh, I love this. And she obtained grace and favor in his sight. Mm -hmm. Friends, this is all about favor. Amen. This is all about favor. God's favor gave Esther preferential treatment. God's favor gave her prominence. God's favor gave Esther position. God's favor gave Esther power and influence. Yes, hallelujah. Now, is this all just a nice story that, that we can read about something that happened thousands of years ago? No. This is an account statement of what's rightfully yours. 